funeral home directors. What is the weirdest thing families have ever done at a funeral wake? Weirdest thing a funeral home director has done for me. My father's funeral had to be on my birthday so the funeral home actually made me a birthday cake. It was a very kind gesture but I was so grief stricken that for like a week afterward I genuinely thought it was something they did for everyone. Your loved one died, you get a cake. I'm a funeral director and to piggyback off this idea, we once had calling hours for someone on their actual birthday. The family had a cake, complete with singing happy birthday to the dearly departed before the wake started. It would have been better if the person got up and blew out the candles. A man can dream I guess. LOL. I do pet cremations and sometimes we do witnessed cremations where the family can be present for everything or sit in a conference room and watch TV while we take care of their pet. It becomes a memorial for their pet and it's usually very sad but very sweet as they say goodbye. Once we sat and waited until the pizza that the dog's owners had ordered arrived and they placed it into the casket that we used to cremate the dog because he always liked to eat pizza. I had a guy take off his shirt and put it in the casket because his dog liked to sleep on his clothes so the guy left half naked. A family brought their two still living dogs and picked them up to smell their deceased brother and so the dogs could say goodbye. Last one broke my heart. Not a funeral director but my family had a what some may call weird funeral for my dad. So here is the story about my dad's going away party. My dad had always said when he died, he didn't want everyone standing around and being sad and instead he wanted a party. My dad died unexpectedly and we threw him a heck of funeral. Except we didn't call it a funeral instead we called it a going away party. It was held on a Sunday in my parents backyard on a warm December day. There was a keg of his favorite beer and three huge bottles of his favorite bourbon. Everyone had to wear jeans and a t-shirt because my dad hated dressing up. If someone wore a collared shirt, they were given one of my dad's t-shirts to wear. Everyone drank and told stories about my dad. At one point, we had almost 100 people in backyard with a drink in their hand to toast my dad. The going away party also featured a huge bonfire and fireworks. Yes, people still tell me it was the best funeral they ever went to. That is a truly amazing story. That's what I've always wanted when I go out. A big party. Don't everyone have a somber day? Celebrate yourselves and the times we've had. Your father must have been a one of a kind man. The t-shirt and jeans thing is especially wonderful. I am a funeral director. Weirdest involved lawyers and lawsuits and multiple restraining orders and I can't talk about it yet. It'll be in my book if I ever write one. Odd though, more recent than anything else in my post history, had a service for a young man who died from a reaction to synthetic marijuana, basically it triggered a seizure, he threw up, fell face down, suffocated, parents come in, and they aren't typical grief stricken adults who lost a child, rather this is a perfect time to argue, and fight with each other, loudly, the director handling arrangements is quickly overwhelmed, instructs them to calm down, they refuse, they start screaming. She threatens to stab him. He says he'll shoot her. Director runs away. Calls the police. Police show up. Remind these two that they aren't allowed within several hundred feet of each other. Court ordered separation. They argue with the officer. End up arrested. And off they go. And they don't come back. We're stuck now. We have remains. Nothing we can do about it. We call a lawyer and a private investigator to track down the next closest thing this kid has to a relative. Finally get a hold of a grandparent and once the body has passed into legally being abandoned we contact them. They apologize to us for the situation, authorize a simple burial, and we do all the funeral disposition portions at no charge just to get away from our predicament. The grandparents own cemetery property, so they allow him on the family plot. Months go by, almost a year, apparently the parents of this child get out, we don't see them but the grandparents warn us. It is important to note that our funeral home also runs a couple cemeteries. At night the phone lines for the cemeteries get forwarded to the director on call. It's 2.30 am. I get a call from a sheriff's deputy. The parents were fighting in the cemetery. The sheriff is pretty sure the mom grabbed a shepherd's hook iron post meant to hold a flower basket and stabbed the dad. He's covered in blood but it's not serious and he won't talk to us. 
The deputy says, I'm going to size them for trespass and dump them downtown, but I need you to sign. I go to the cemetery where their kid is buried. Nobody is there. I call him back. Maybe he'd already left. No. He is at his gardens. Where am I? He wants to get going, etc. Their son is buried at ABC Gardens. The line is quiet. You're telling me these two stupid m don't even know where their goddamned kid is buried? Yes it. They'd apparently gone to a cemetery, found a grave with a headstone with a relatively similar name to their sons, and proceeded to trash the site and fight. Never noticing the grave there was for a 90 plus year old, not their junior high school age kid. No wonder that kid wanted to get high. I need some frickin' tar to deal with parents like that. Not a director, but a good buddy of mine passed from cancer, and at the wake, apparently he specifically requested that someone fill a condom with as much spaghetti as they could. He was a pretty quirky guy. That's what your friend gets. He'd understand. Funeral director here. Daughter punched the deceased. Father, to the point her hand broke. I've seen a bunch of fights break out, cops get called, family's members taken out. Not a funeral director, but after my mom was cremated and put in her velvet bag, I nudged my brother and said, that's mom he said, yeah I said, wow, she's lost weight, my aunt was mad as heck, my mom would have laughed her butt off. LOL your mom sounds like she was a cool lady, sorry for your loss. My aunt Liver streamed my grandfather's funeral on Facebook a few days ago. Her intentions were good, as it was for myself and the rest of the grandchildren that couldn't make it. But something felt weird about it. She didn't even tell us ahead of time so I just randomly got a notification saying she was live from the funeral. I understand everyone grieves in their own way, but that's a bit strange. At the same time, I have yet to see any good or happy stories come out of Facebook live feeds. Not a director, but my uncle is and I was helping with the funeral. The church that the funeral was at only had on street parking. Halfway through reading the eulogy, a parking enforcement officer walks in and walked up to the stage. They took the mic as the speaker was finishing and told everyone they had to move their vehicles or they would be ticketed and towed. My granddad had a cool funeral. He was a huge queen. Freddie Mercury. Fans of the hearse drivers played the greatest hits album in the hearse all the way to the crematorium, really loudly with the windows open. They were smiling and laughing all the way. They told us they'd had great Craig singing along. As the coffin went down at the end of the service we played another one bites the dust. Lots of laughter as people left. We all went back to the pub. Everyone had a Bacardi and lemonade as their first drink which was my granddad's tipple. Then back to my parents for one heck of a party. Dancing the night away to Freddy. Ha 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 the first time I read this I thought you called your granddad a huge queen. Made me think he was super. Super gay. LOL. Awesome story though. My step grandpa told me about a time a family member died and they stood him up in the corner with a hat on. While everyone danced. That is what he wanted though. And everyone had fun with it. Does anyone else have a similar story? At the short graveside service for my mother. Had a regular funeral earlier. The intent was that kids, grandkids, etc. Would each place a rose on her casket. Then the casket would be lowered into the ground. The rose part went as planned. But the casket got stuck part way down. Pretty soon there's one guy with a large board cranking away at the end of the casket while another fellow was jumping up and down on the top of with the family members cheering them on my wife yelled she just wanted one more guy to jump on her before she went when they finally got it down into the hole we gave the gravediggers a standing ovation it was like something from a mel brooks movie my mom had a good sense of humor and would have found this abandonment of social standards quite amusing a couple of dozen people there. Nobody got video. I got lots of photos. At least. Not quite that bad. But a similar thing happened at my grandmother's funeral. They lowered the casket down on those straps that look like what trucks use to tie down loads. When the grounds crew tried to shimmy the straps out from under the coffin. One got stuck. There we are. Standing around the grave with the grounds crew pulling on the straps. When my dad goes ma. Just let go. I've seen a lady pull their stillborn baby out of a coffin, 
Hold them for 10 minutes then have to be blocked so they didn't run away. What I also find weird are people that bring in a band and have a big song and dance. So many people like to show off their family at funerals. And I am usually weirded out by just how many families are messed up and how many cobwebs get opened up during the grief process. A full on interpretive dance in front of the coffin. It was stuff of legend. I've seen a lady pull their stillborn baby out of a coffin. Hold them for 10 minutes then have to be blocked so they didn't run away. I wouldn't really call that weird. It's more heartbreaking than anything. I can't imagine losing a child. There's no way your mind could be right so soon after. I hope that lady has somehow managed to find peace and healing. Not a funeral director, but at a funeral I attended the 21 gun salute was with live ammo. And two of the birds released for the ceremony were shot dead. They did one of those at our church for a member who retired from the navy. Unfortunately our church is in a bad part of town and police were called. It was the first time the ceremony was performed at our church and the neighborhood thought it was another gang shooting. At my father's celebration of life, my in-laws gave me a check for $50. It's not really out there, but it's pretty weird if you think of cause and effect. $50 is a bit cheap for an assassination. My ex's family were funeral directors. His mom told me a story once about the county attorney, one of the richest men in the little town. His first wife passed of cancer. She had a lot of dental work done prior to the illness and all of it was done with gold. The attorney asked for the gold to be cut out of her teeth so he could sell it at one of those cash for gold places. My ex's dad did the work. He was a combat vet from Vietnam and had seen many terrible things in life but he said he almost quit that day due to the senseless mutilation of this lady's body. All because of this already rich man wanted to get richer. But my god. People can be such monsters. Obligatory not a funeral director. But I am hopefully starting mortuary school next semester actually. I had a friend in high school who was lesbian but she had gotten pregnant during an experimental tryst with a man. Unfortunately her pregnancy was not one of the best and she partied and hung out with the wrong crowd a lot, even at 8 months. She was in the passenger seat when someone was drunkenly driving home in a packed car from a party and the car crashed into a canal. Everyone escaped the car and drunkenly walked home failing to call the cops and not realizing that she was still trapped inside. She died by drowning 8 months pregnant trapped in the car and her body wasn't recovered for 3 days. Her funeral was closed casket due to the stage of her body's decomposition. Water and 120 degree weather is no bueno for corpses, but for some freaking reason, the unborn fetus was pulled out of her and they had an open casket for it alongside hers. It was very strange to unexpectedly see a tiny casket alongside hers and walk up to it and try to make sense of what I was looking at. It honestly looked like a piece of mangled dried wood and it was pretty flooring that the family would want that. Either way I understand families grieve differently but what truly annoyed me was everyone's morbid curiosity about the fetus. A very large amount of people paid their respects to the fetus and completely forgot to pay their respects to our friend because her casket was closed. There was also the subjects of her whole extended family, like 15 cousins, just talking and laughing non-stop during the service, some of her friends making out in the seats and feeling each other up, and notoriously the baby daddy and her lesbian lover arguing on the phone. The funeral service was a complete circus due to being comprised of mainly 14-17 year olds. I felt terribly bad for the adult family. Me and my family are all white and very southern. At my grandmother's funeral, my uncle, her son, showed up in a cowboy hat, boots, and a belt with the words N baby stamped into the leather. I don't even understand what the heck it means, and really can't comprehend how he thought that was an appropriate belt to wear to his mother's funeral. That shouldn't be appropriate to even exist. Whoa. Not a director, however. My co-worker's aunt passed away and he chose me out of everyone in the office to attend the funeral. Everyone went around just kind of stating facts. How tall she was, how many acres of beet farm she had. It was weird, but it got worse. After his brother showed up late and parked his car halfway into the grave site, my co-worker grabbed a shotgun, flung open the casket, and fired two rounds into it. I booked it out of there. 
not really weird at a funeral, but funeral director related. We had a pretty close-knit group of friends, and one of us was a funeral director. He decided to get out of the business and sold his practice and building. A month later two of our really close friends died in a car accident. If he had still had his funeral home, their bodies would have likely gone to him. It was hard enough on him as it was. I don't think he would have ever recovered if he had to take care of them and their services. I'm so glad he got out of the business when he did. But, given that context, the weirdest thing I've ever experienced at a funeral home was grilling burgers and watching UFC. I already wrote this higher up in the thread, but I worked at a funeral home for all of 4 days. On the second day someone dear to me passed away, and on my last day I picked her up from the morgue. Not easy, and not something I'd ever want to do again. Clearly not cut out for that. I wish I was there. Skipped out. My dad told me that some visiting priests, pretty sure he was not a real one from some latin american country we're mexican americans he pulled my distant relative out of her casket by the arm claiming he could raise her from the dead no one asked this nut to try her organs were harvested and blood drained even if he could what kind of vessel would he bring her back to they had to beat him off the corpse that last sentence though not a director but backstory when my grandfather was dying in hospice I would sit at the foot of his bed and rub his feet because he would complain about them being cold. At his viewing, I stood by the foot of his coffin with my grandmother, accepting condolences, thanking people for coming, etc. I went to tuck the blanket at the bottom of the coffin because I had brushed it by accident, felt his cold feet and started rubbing them without thinking. I got a lot of weird looks before my cousin came over and asked what I was doing. Not a director, but when I was a kid, one of my aunts passed due to a pretty gruesome accident. At the wake, one of her sisters enticed a fight with the other sister, which included a full on fist fight with hair pulling and denture removing to avoid damage. I wash ushered into the lobby with the other kids the minute my one aunt took her teeth out. The poor funeral director could just stand there in complete and utter shock while the two duked it out, and all of us kids could see it even though we were in the lobby. Here, hold my earrings. I'm Greek and it seems like at all our funerals we have people serving trays with shots of hard liquor. We have a good time. Obligatory not a funeral director. I did not get to witness this, since I had to leave before the final viewing. At my wife's grandmother's funeral, my wife's aunt, who is one of the worst people I've ever met. There is no way she's not severely sociopathic. And we all believe she's the reason my wife's grandma went down the drain so quickly. Anyway, I guess at the end, someone started to recite the Lord's Prayer. And my wife's terrible aunt just goes into an insane coughing fit the second they start. It was really bad. They describe it as deep, visceral cough like she inhaled pepper spray. No way it was fake. They keep going with the prayer. And the second they stop, she stops coughing. My wife and her dad look at each other like... WTF, TL, DR, wife's aunt confirmed demon. This is going to sound weird and unbelievable, but I have to recount this tale. They wanted a private moment with the deceased. We allowed it, and all our staff cleared out, alongside the pastor. Within about 5 minutes, we hear retching, and dry heaving, and we knock, and ask if everything's okay. But the retching doesn't stop, so the staff enters the room, and by god, I'll never forget the image of what I saw. They were eating slices of the body, embalmed slices. God knows how toxic it was. The adults were arrested for desecration of a corpse. The children went into foster care. But these were some sick bastards. As a fellow FD, I need to ask for proof. In terms of a news story or something. That sounds insane. Literally and physically. Not a director, but my 9th grade English teacher told us about her dad's wake. Apparently he was a real prankster, so in his will there were to be 4 kegs of beer that people could enjoy that would be taken care by funds he had set aside. Unbeknownst to the guests of the wake, he made sure he only paid for 3 so that the people at the service would have to pick up for the last keg, which was around $200 if I remember. That makes him less of a prankster, more of a bellend. Not a funeral director but assisted some. Two ladies having a screaming match that got bad enough to call the police. 
20 minutes later found the widow hotboxing the women's restroom during her late husband's funeral. Had to ask her to leave. Frick I thought you said shadow boxing at first. Some old lady just punching away at the air before getting kicked out. Not a funeral director, but I have a story that fits pretty well here. I was at one funeral where the widow got up to thank everyone for coming, and talk about her husband and how much she loved him. It started to get awkward when she went into detail about how he died and how she helped prepare the body, shaving his face and cutting his hair. She then went on to say that since many of us in attendance didn't know them when they got married, she would reenact their wedding vows for our benefit. She proceeded to do so, with a friend joining her to speak her dead husband's lines. The cringiest part was when she slipped the wedding ring onto the finger of the corpse and kissed him, not a little peck but a full on wedding day. Yikes, I still can't even think about it. At my father's gravesite service my aunt, my father's sister, gave a very long, very rambling and inappropriate speech about how this will affect her and how the rest of us would never understand. Then she walked to her parents gravestone next door and dumps a bottle of whiskey on it, interrupting my dad's service as much as she could and doing everything possible to make the tragedy about her. Classic narcissist. Sorry for your loss. Went to a funeral in the back of a Marxies and watched my buddy's drunk pregnant sister-in-law lose an argument to her two-year-old son as she failed to make her taco. Savage AF. Not a funeral director but New Year's Day the 1st of January 1987 I lost my best mate growing up due to an unexpected accident he suffered walking back to his campsite after nice celebrations. We were only 16 years old at the time and were already regular weed smokers. The day before the wake we all went to the funeral home for one last session with our bro. Must have been around 12 of us in there and we smoked the whole place out for about 2 hours with his favorite music blasting. We gave him about 100 shotguns to help him on his journey and a few dozen big joints. The owners just closed the doors and let us be god bless them. Every New Year's I smoke one for my bro even though I'm not a regular anymore really miss him. One of my parents is a funeral director and I help out there as an assistant. While I don't deal directly with families, the amount of fighting I hear about is astounding. I don't know if this counts as weird, but it couldn't have been easy for the funeral director. During my well-known grandpa's funeral, everyone available from the sheriff's department, the EMTs, Nearby police, fire stations, the local government, some of the churches, and even one guy nobody knew but my grandpa had saved and kept in touch with, were all in attendance, and my cousin decides to shoplift from the gas station across the street, and BTW, the funeral home wasn't big enough for all of these people so they were hanging around the gas station too, idk what he was thinking. The deceased was a diehard Star Wars fan. His request was that theme music from the Star Wars movie be played at the funeral home and also at the church, before and after the service. The most striking display, though, was having the pallbearers dressed in costume as Star Wars characters as they took the coffin in and out of the church. Not a funeral but on a Facebook friend's memorial page, there was this chick who everybody confirms he was an acquaintance with posts in the group weekly since he's died. It's like Helga Pataki from Hey Arnold kind of stuff. Like he died 5 years ago and it's she's still going strong. I get people go weird over grief but it's very strange, especially for an acquaintance. Not a funeral director but at my great grandmother's funeral, my great uncle videotaped the funeral and wake. There was also a live band. She wasn't even that kind of person. Again with not a funeral director, but, they didn't have a funeral. They did absolutely nothing to mark the passing. An elderly gentleman passed away, and his wife declared there would be no funeral. That, as far as she was concerned, would be the end of it. His body was being given to science. She didn't have to do anything. Not that she didn't love him. She just didn't want a funeral. The issue was that for various reasons, science wouldn't accept his body, so the morgue basically had to call her and say well, what do you want to do with his body? As I understand it, she basically told them she didn't care and they could keep it. In the end, the kids stepped in, organized to have him cremated, and hung on to the ashes until they managed to plan a memorial service that didn't offend the widow too much, but was still a way for them to say goodbye to their father. 
obligatory not a funeral director but, at my little brother's wake, we all wore comic book nerd shirts, passed out those inch diameter superhero buttons to the older folks, and had a disco ball-esque colored light generator in the corner of the room with the casket. It flashed in time to Reliant K we were playing. The funeral staff was super nice and accommodating, but I'm sure they thought we were a bunch of oddballs. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.